Scotland is absolutely thrilled to be able to sponsor the award for safeguarding the digital legacy. As a national archive and as a memory institution, we're really excited because the award promotes and celebrates practical, hands-on projects that actively preserve digital materials. And we have three wonderfully diverse finalists in front of us. The award for safeguarding the digital legacy has several criteria. For me, there was no doubt that all nominees understood the significance of the objects they were working to preserve. The projects examined methodologies, addressed risks that digital objects face, and offered clear benefits to anyone wishing to access their materials. Each project in its own way documents our global heritage by securing content about politics, the arts, the environment, individual rights, and more. Reproductive Health is a Wellcome Trust funded project working to provide long-term preservation and access to the many at-risk digital archives generated by grassroots women's reproductive health movements during the campaign to repeal the Eighth Amendment in Ireland. Many countries around the world have seen mobilisations of people for progressive change in recent years and Ireland is no exception. In 2018, the Irish public voted in a referendum to repeal the Eighth Amendment to the Irish Constitution. The Eighth Amendment, enacted by another referendum in 1983, placed a constitutional block on the right to legal abortion care in Ireland. The repeal of the Eighth Amendment meant that the Irish government was able to pass legislation enabling elective abortion in Ireland for the first time in the nation's history. The material archiving reproductive health is working with comes from a number of stakeholder organisations who have donated their digital records to us and of qualitative data from researchers, primarily in the social sciences. In March 2022, ARH published collections of design and publicity material from our stakeholder organisations, as well as a sequence of stories from the popular Facebook page In Her Shoes. On March 8th, ARH also published research data collections in the form of oral history interviews with medics, campaigners and women's rights activists, collected by Real Productive Justice Project, the Irish Qualitative Data Archive and a number of individual researchers. More recently, on the fourth anniversary of the referendum, the 25th of May, ARH published a second set of collections, including publications and reports by the Abortion Rights Campaign, Terminations for Medical Reasons and Together for Yes. On the 25th of May, we also published some research data collections in the form of oral history interviews with campaigners and women's rights activists from the 1970s to the 1990s. These impor provide important records of the lived experiences of activists and people affected by issues of reproductive inequality in Ireland. Archiving Reproductive Health is making our research protocols publicly available. Publications to date in this category include an ethics protocol, which ensures the quality and integrity of our research and archiving processes, and a researcher self-care protocol, which focuses on the potential of harm to the researcher when working with sensitive or traumatic data relating to reproductive health. Another thing that we have found during this project are the great benefits to be had from collaborating directly with the organisations from which we are getting this data. Our stakeholder advisory forum consists of representatives of each of the organisations whose data is being collected and ingested DRI in this project. This is one of 20 hard drives used by the experimental filmmaker Stephen Dwoskin. Don't worry, we've made a forensic disc image of all the contents. Born in Brooklyn in 1939, Dwoskin came to London in 1964 and became a key figure in British avant-garde film. And from around 2000, he was working mainly digitally. His films are held in the British Film Institute, and about a year after his death in 2012, his archive, including many non-digital records, came to Reading. As an archive service with no experience of digital archives, we knew that this would be a massive challenge, but also an opportunity. Our main impetus was to preserve the archive as the basis for academic research. Professor Rachel Garfield in the University's School of Art brought together an interdisciplinary team, including film historians and theorists, data scientists, and digital forensics experts. With funding from the Arts and Humanities Research Council, the team catalogued and explored Dwoskin's archive. 
The project has greatly increased knowledge of his works, methods, connections and influences, leading to academic publications and film screenings. But in parallel with the research about Bloskin, the project has acted as a catalyst for building up local capability to handle digital archives. The close involvement of a professional archive service meant that sustainability was central to our aims. We archivists do tend to think in decades rather than years. With incredible support from the project's digital forensics and data science researchers, respectively under Dr. Jung Yong Kim at the University of Glasgow and Dr. Frank Hofgartner at the University of Sheffield, we took a whole team approach to the challenge instead of employing a digital archivist. As well as undertaking training and self-study, we developed policies and workflows and secured funding for system development. As a team, we have proven to ourselves and hopefully to others that the challenges of preserving the digital heritage can be met by archivists for whom this is unfamiliar territory. We knew that the hard drives would not be straightforward to deal with, but that they could at least be learning points. Unlocking and documenting historical software meant that these drives could act as digital preservation exemplars in areas such as imaging, emulation, data visualization, access to sensitive data, and a user-centered approach to cataloging. Throughout the project, we have been learning from each other, not so easy without meeting in person, and looking to share our learning widely. Some additional funding from the UK National Archives has allowed a deep look at cataloging processes for hard drives, and we look forward to sharing those findings. Our symposium on digital archives, delivered online asynchronously and entitled Out Shift Archive, brought together a wide range of expertise in archives of creative practice. I've been photographing for approximately 33 years, and as such, my archive now consists of over 1 million photographs, mostly as negatives in the beginning, but since 2003, all as digital files, and in latter days, the negatives have even been digitized. Within my collection, there are photo essays on industry, on politics, on sports. There are features on personalities such as Nelson Mandela when he visited Glasgow, or Mikhail Gorbachev in Aberdeen. There are environmental stories from around the world, and importantly, many, many stories of everyday people leading their lives. It's important to me that these stories and photographs be preserved for future generations, not just as the story of my career, but as the story of our nation and of our times. There's a wealth of potential in these images as research and educational tools. I was delighted when the University of St Andrews expressed interest in acquiring my collection. It was important to me that my archives stay in Scotland and that it stayed as a whole, and that it found a home in an institution that had the experience to look after it and the ambition to utilise it, to research it, to bring it online and to share the images my collection consists of with the wider public. Jeremy's always made great use of the image metadata fields to catalogue his own work. In theory, I simply have to extract that data from the images and map it across to our collections management system. And although that sounds easy, the challenge is the sheer scale of the collection. Any mistakes I make at this stage can easily get out of control. But as long as I can avoid making any errors in the translation, it's amazing to have so much useful, searchable information instantly made available. Jeremy's work joins our photo collections, dating back to 1844 and already comprising over one million items, telling the story of photography from the birth of the medium until the present day. We have academic endorsement for this work and the collection will be used across teaching and research. The public can access and use the collection through our Triple IF enabled collection site, which allows images to be used by third party applications, for example, our digital exhibit tool. The project is part of our wider commitment to preserving digital and hybrid collections of national significance. Our capacity for handling large, complex digital collections is supported by a digital preservation policy, digital preservation steering group, and multiple staff collaborating together across disciplines. We're sharing our learning and experience through a launch event, blog posts, and we're very grateful for this opportunity to share the project with you, alongside other finalists as part of this year's Digital Preservation Award.